when I was a kid, I, I, a younger kid, I, I think I was just massively into Star Trek, the, the original series, and things like the Six Million Dollar Man and Fantastic Voyage and um, uh, Voice of the Bottom of the Sea and those kind of sci-fi um, story of the week shows I really loved. And then, then as I got older, I was... I think it was things like Hill Street Blues, things that were more multi-layered, more characterful. Um, but I never ever thought that I, I would get involved in TV. I was, I was a fan, but I, I never thought it would translate into being part of the industry. And, and it was only when I got a, an unexpected opportunity to become involved in a medical drama that I even started to think about working in television. My career started in quite an unusual way. I was working as a hospital doctor and there was an advert in the back of the Br British Medical Journal from uh, a television production company who were looking to meet doctors to discuss making a, a drama set in the world of, um, of uh, the medical profession. And uh, I responded to the advert and sent in just a couple of ideas. And, and really they were very sketchy ideas from the, the medics review that I was involved in. Uh, but I think there was just something I saw in the advert that, w that, that was about making a television medical drama that represented what I was experiencing rather than necessarily what I was seeing on TV. And I was just incredibly lucky that, that uh, they were all so interested in, in what I might be able to bring. And we went through a long process of, uh, of developing my skills as a writer. And I'm, I'm really grateful for that, that support I was given very early on. I love writing, I love TV, and um, I've always, even from before I was in TV, I'd always imagined that, that a story always started with the script. And for me, that's the starting point of making a television program. But even if I've got ambitions for who might be in it or what it's going to look like or what day of the week it's going to go out, I know that the, the, the process always starts with the script. Well, I was a fan of police dramas anyway. I, I, I love things like The Shield and Hill Street Blues and um, some of the British shows like Between the Lines and The Cops. And um, I'd always been attracted to the idea of something that was that was a little bit more action-packed, more jeopardy maybe, and, and more of a thriller than the other series I'd written. So that was the starting point, and then I became interested in the idea of police, police corruption, because I thought that it would, it would bring a, a different texture to the drama. It would be cops versus cops, rather than cops versus criminals. And, and once that idea was settled on, it was a case of doing research into how a police anti-corruption unit might work, which was, some was done by reading, and some was done with, with direct interviews with people involved in that world. I tend to write precinct dramas and I've tended to, to go through a process where I, I think of my characters as gender neutral, that I've, I've worked in institutions where the, there was complete equality, where, where there was no real difference between the jobs that men and women did. And so because my characters tend to be in a professional setting, it, it, it always feels completely open to me that a character would be male or female. And so I, I never really think that because someone's doing a particular function within, within um, the precinct, that they would be one thing or another. And, and generally, it's, it's, it's more a decision about who I think might be the right actor for it or, or what the, the, their personal story is. And, and, and I think when people are, uh, are making that judgment about my female characters, it's because they're looking at them and how they do their job. And, and how they do their job, I would hope, comes over as being gender neutral. One of the things I really like about returning drama is, is, is the opportunity to, to, to do a second series or a third series, that, that you get to know the show better, you get to know the, the characters, the relationships, and, and it gives you an opportunity to, to push the boundaries, to, to get deeper into to those characters, and the, the, the little bombs you can drop into the plot so, so much hard work goes into doing a first series, so many things about where the characters work, who they are, what their relationships are, what the hierarchy is, what their jurisdiction is, what, is, what are the rules of the, the world you've created. And so much, so much of that is then available to exploit as you go, go on. So I always feel much better about doing a, a later series than I do about that first series. I think TV is a fantastic home for people who, who want to write creatively. And I think that um, we, we have a fantastic television industry, but 
it requires a lot of persistence. I think you have to be hungry for it, you have to want to work hard, you have to be able to deal with rejection and and for that rejection to make to motivate you to to work harder and to do new projects, not to keep just doing rewrites of the same thing over and over again in the hope that somehow that will that will knock open a door. And, and, and all that's really about determination. I'd say if you really care about your work and you have talent, you will succeed. And the British television industry is incredibly open to people who have that hunger for, to, to succeed in, in writing.